on guys, it's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having an awesome day today. Having a look at what's going on right now, looks kind of like the markets really aren't doing too well. Actually, what really happened was we sort of tried to get above 10,800. We pulled back a little bit, but really we're at the exact same levels that we were two days ago, so it's not really that big of a deal. However, we do have very mixed sentiment in the market today. I want to talk about the fact that we do have Q4 being traditionally bullish for Bitcoin. If we historically look at the charts, quarter four has been bullish for Bitcoin. However, we have had a lot of news come out. For example, we did recently see that the UK is banning crypto derivatives, right? So this might potentially be a negative for the space. Now, some people think this could be a positive. However, between that, the fact that Trump, oh, although he's actually doing quite well now recently, did come down with the virus. We did, in fact, see BitMEX coming under scrutiny. Lots Lots of different things happening around the space. So we need to talk about whether or not this actually could have a positive or a negative impact on Bitcoin. What could be happening short term for the Bitcoin price? And finally, is China actually secretly responsible for a potential upcoming Bitcoin pump? Well, there is one metric we need to look at and also one bit of data that historically the last time it happened did signal a massive Bitcoin rally. However, Short term, we still do have some price to go down. So I'm going to let you guys know all about that today. What is going on? If that sounds good to you, super quick video today. Thank you for coming back. Let's dive directly into the charts. But first, actually, I need to tell you guys, I am actually having an AMA. It's going to be a live stream, by the way. I know I don't usually live stream on the channel. This is over at Crypto Atlas, and this is happening Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. So you guys, you know, if you haven't been over to Crypto Atlas yet, basically it's a profile you can use. It's like a social network actually and you can list all your different products that you use. I have lots of different recommended sources in here, CoinGecko, Grayscale, uh, you know, different podcasts and stuff like that. You can also list your favorite tokens and, and things, you know, other stuff. And it's just a cool place to just catch up with crypto friends. And uh, yeah, great place for news and resources. So if you're interested, I will be live. Set your calendars because you guys will be able to basically go live and ask me any questions you want. So that is the quick news before we get into the charts. Now, having a look right here, you do notice that ultimately we basically have more room to the upside than to the downside. However, if we do keep getting Getting rejected sort of at the center of this asymmetrical triangle. We are going to come back down to retest the support. That short term could see Bitcoin go back down to about the $10,300 level. Now, we'd really be looking for that massive breakout if we could get back above $11,200. And you could see here very distinctly, clearly on the CME futures chart how much Bitcoin every time we hit this level, we get rejected we got rejected and we got rejected again. So like I said, this could push Bitcoin back down to the $10,400, $10,500 level. I would anticipate we would have a bounce after that. And then I think that would be sort of the do or die moment. Now we do have, you know, potentially a week or so until that happens. Ultimately, if we push all the way to the end of this pattern, which usually Bitcoin doesn't actually complete its patterns, it tends to be a little bit impatient, could put us third week of October. And I would would be looking for a breakout. Now, of course, we did talk about in yesterday's video the fact that there is that potential chance that all the tokens or all the coins, the Bitcoins get released from Mt. Gox. Maybe they're going to dump their coins. But in yesterday's video, we pretty much summarized the fact that that's probably not going to happen. But I did want to discuss it. But as I have said, there is room again over here on the macro channel to go down to about 9.5K, which I think would be a phenomenal, not financial advice, buying opportunity for Bitcoin. However, Bitcoin has been above $10,000 for over 70 days. This does mark its longest streak above $10,000 ever. So there is a lot going on for Bitcoin right now, not to mention like the crypto dog pointed out, Q4 has historically been a very, very good quarter for Bitcoin. Some of Bitcoin's largest gains, in fact, 210% in 2017 was its largest gain ever for one quarter. So it is possible, not necessarily saying it has to happen, but it is possible that history could repeat itself. Now, let's talk about the bad news and then let's talk about the good news. Let's talk about everything today. So number one, we have in a landmark decision that pretty much happened... Uh, 
yesterday or today in the UK, you have their financial conduct authority basically saying companies in the country will no longer be able to offer cryptocurrency derivatives products such as futures, options, and exchange-traded notes to retail customers. So, bummer for retail, but they're just trying to protect their citizens, right? Several reasons are provided for more detail, including concerns that they have no reliable basis for valuation, are subject to abuse and financial crimes, and are extremely volatile. Further, Motivation cited included inadequate understanding of crypto assets by retail consumers and a claim that retail investors lack a legitimate investment need for these products. But you can gamble the mortgage money totally away at the casino anytime you want. But just don't bet on Bitcoin, right? God forbid we bet on the Bitcoin. Well... The ban will come into effect on January 6, 2021. The regulators warned that as the sale of derivatives and ETNs that reference certain types of crypto assets to retail consumers is now banned, any firm offering these services to retail customers is likely a scam. All right, so be wary, my friends. This ban reflects how seriously we view the potential harm to retail consumers in these products. Consumer protection is paramount here. However, having a look at the Bitcoin price today, um, yeah, we're down 0.25%. So the one thing we need to discuss right off the bat is that Bitcoin is not reacting the way that it used to to potential bad news, right? All the news with BitMEX, the news about Trump, now the news about the banning of derivatives. Bitcoin's still at $10,600. Remember, in a bear market, no good news can make the price go up. In a bull market, no amount of bad news can push the price down. However, fundamentally, fundamentally, we do have a little bit of room to go down, right? But we're not seeing those massive drops like we have before, right? Obviously, this one that we had back here in the beginning of September, that was pretty much part of the formation of a technical pattern, not necessarily having anything to do with the news, right? So there is that moving forward, but let's talk about what Cole Gardner pointed out, and this is incredible. Have a look at this spike right here. New Bitcoin addresses were absolutely off the chart last week. The backstory is bullish and intriguing, a unique view on a new bull market catalyst. Now, let's talk about what is happening right now. And does this have anything to do with China? That is the uh, speculation right now. So Gardner went on to talk about 22,000 new Bitcoin entities appeared in one single day alone. The normal level is between 5,000 and 10,000. Uh, 10,000 per day. New addresses are an important volume indicator and price action should follow. Volume precedes price, okay? Now, check this out. The source of the new addresses cannot be determined with certainty. However, China might be the bet. As a widely reported media campaign in the last week of September called cryptocurrency the best performing asset of 2020. Last week, the Chinese government began a coordinated marketing campaign to focus Chinese retail investor psyche on crypto. Yes, it's really happening. In fact, I was kind of shocked myself. Isn't China supposed to be against crypto? What is going on right now? Does this have something to do with the bullish indicator that I'm gonna talk about in a second? And does this prove that they have been accumulating and China could potentially be ready to send the bulls? Can you even say that in one sentence? Okay, let's talk about this. So it also caught the attention of Dovey Wan, who described the Chinese state media campaign as curious. It's very rare to see such a coordinated effort from China. Now, let's talk about something that was spotted by Trading Shot over on TradingView. So, these guys are an independent marketing analysis portal. So, this is what they saw. The on-chain smart money indicator shows that influential traders and investors are buying Bitcoin en masse. This is happening despite the cryptocurrency's inability to sustain above $12,000. It is therefore uh, indicating a strong support at $10,000. And like I said, we have not fallen below $10,000 in over 70 days. This is the longest streak in Bitcoin's history that we have ever stayed above 
10. We have never done this before, essentially, right? I know people joke, oh, Bitcoin's never done this before, right? How many titles have, have I made that? Well, it hasn't done this before. It's the first time. Anyway, so they say this is a bullish sign for Q4. Price generally goes into a bullish trend after finding on-chain smart money accumulation. He explained further by referring to a fractal from November 2018. Back then, Bitcoin was trading at about 6,000, but on its way to hit 3,000, the smart money indicator started flashing accumulation signals. With Bitcoin repeatedly rejecting upsides at about 12,000, but holding a solid price floor near 10,000, analysts are anticipating the cryptocurrency to undergo a bullish breakout. Part of the reason is its growing proximity to traditional assets. Bitcoin has shown an erratic correlation with stocks and gold futures as it trades inversely to the U.S. dollar. So conspiracy time, conspiracy theory time. Do you think that this was secret accumulation from Chinese investors? And that's what we were essentially seeing on these charts over here. And now... Uh, you know, we've seen this campaign, we've seen this marketing, we've seen all these on-chain addresses. Are we looking for that crazy breakout by the end of this month when we get to sort of the third week of October? Are we looking for that crazy breakout back to the 13,000? And remember, I actually showed you guys an insane um chart when we were talking about the descending broadening wedge that actually targeted Bitcoin going to $15,500. And technically, we are still in that pattern. So that is still a possibility that we do need to consider moving forward, right? Now, scrolling down here, you can see Cantor and Clark. He said right here, plenty of traditional market funds and participants are bidding Bitcoin as a higher beta play on stocks. It's like a tech stock at this point. Best believe Bitcoin is heading up so long as the index heads up. And also, like Clark said earlier, kind of interesting, right? We have all this bad news coming out, and yet Bitcoin really isn't reacting the way that you would think it would, right? Where's our 20%, 30% dump like we used to get when we had news like this come out? We haven't seen it. Does this mean that Bitcoin is maturing? Does it mean that there is a massive breakout of Bruin? Well, like I said, we could potentially retest that lower level, but I do think that by the end of this year, like New Year's Eve, we are going to see Bitcoin trading significantly higher than prices are today. I, I mean, you can quote me on it. That's what I'm thinking. But you know who else thinks we're going to do quite well? is Mike McGlone. In fact, in the October edition of the Bloomberg Crypto Outlook, Mike McGlone actually... By the way, he's a seasoned Bloomberg uh, intelligence market analyst. In fact, Elio Trades, if you guys watch him, he actually has had him on his show a few times. So essentially, he thinks that Bitcoin could continue appreciating on the fact of increase on the basis of increased adoption, right? However, he does say that it might happen at a little bit of a slower pace. Now he is looking for a hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin by 2025. I'm going to show you why and also show you a chart that explains, you know, Bitcoin most likely isn't going anywhere. Some people think it'll die out. It's a fad. I'm going to show you why it's probably not. Why I definitely think it's not. Let's just say that. Now, he says Bitcoin has exhibited a trend of adding zeros to its price from $10 in 2017. It took about four years to go from 1000 to 10000 in 2017. So doubling that time frame maturation could take the price upwards to 100000 in about five years. Mike said that the Bitcoin demand indicators are positive. Barring that stablecoin market, the rest of the cryptocurrency market will experience excessive supply and competition in the days ahead. Now, pointing to Bitcoin's uh, depreciation from 2017 all-time highs, why are we still not above 20,000, right? McClone notes that Bitcoin is still in what he refers to as a hungover mode. The specific trigger that will ignite Bitcoin's rally to new highs is unknown, but what is known is that demand versus supply supply metrics remain price positive and kind of bullish, especially considering the fact that we only have about 12% of the Bitcoin left to actually be circulated, right? So if Bitcoin copies its previous bullish price moves combined with a hint of maturation, it could also take... Um, it could almost take double the time to add another zero, et cetera, right? So that's why he says that we are still potentially going to 100,000, but it might take a little bit longer this time, right? But let's talk about our good old friend, the Lindy effect. Now, you may not know what the Lindy effect is. Basically, let me summarize it for you in the absolute most layman terms ever. So basically, if something's been around for a, a given amount of time, the odds are that it'll probably be around for the same amount of time. 
I'm oversimplifying it, but basically the fact that Bitcoin has already existed and survived for 10 years basically means that it has very good chances of being around or surviving for another 10 years. And you could see right here, this is essentially where we are right now, right at this star. And you can see we move towards greater perceived safety, greater education and understanding, greater decentralization, more liquidity, perceived store of value. And then once it becomes a reliable store of value, that is when you reach the milestone. There are a few things that still need to happen after that. You need a growing network value, right? Right now, it's still a lot of just pretty much just people just betting on it, right? People just sort of saying, hey, I think the price of Bitcoin is going to go higher, just speculating and, and, and buying it, right? But once it does become that store of value, you actually get that network, you have better price stability, greater acceptance and reliability. That is when we move to Bitcoin actually being a widespread medium of exchange, convenient unit of account, and ultimately full global money. Although, let's be honest, we probably do have a ways to go for, uh, you know, to that point. But that is just something to keep in mind as we discuss. And, you know, just like Willie Wu pointed out, you know, and obviously I don't bash gold. I'm not against gold. I like gold. I think gold is a great hedge. But here's a nice chart just to give you a little bit of a visual. Had you invested $1 in Bitcoin one year, two year, three year, all the way down to 10 years ago versus had you invested that same dollar in gold, well, Having a look at this, had you invested, I mean, basically, even just a year ago, you'd have a dollar twenty-seven worth of gold, you'd have a dollar thirty-one of Bitcoin. And as you could see, that even throughout Bitcoin's insane pumps and crazy subsequent crashes, 84% crashes from top to bottom, Bitcoin has still been a better investment than gold every single year since its inception, including the bear market, including today. Take your pick. So yeah, I mean, numbers don't lie, charts don't lie, guys, right? Now, we also do have some other crazy news that came out. This could also be considered some bearish news. Tech millionaire and cryptocurrency proponent John McAfee has been indicted in Spain. John McAfee is being charged with evading taxes and will it, willfully failing to file tax returns. I mean, he pretty much came out publicly and said he wasn't going to pay them, which... More power to you, buddy. The June 15th indictment was unveiled shortly after his arrest in Spain, where he was accused of raking in millions of cryptocurrencies for consolation, speaking engagements, selling rights to a documentary of his life story, and promoting ICO token sales without being transparent, that he was being paid as much as $23.1 million to do so. That is incredible. That is absolutely crazy. You guys remember he was doing his like coin of the day type thing. So he's also being accused of evading tax by directing his income to be paid into bank accounts and cryptocurrency exchange accounts in the name of nominees, concealing of assets like his yacht, real property, vehicles, etc. from the IRS under the name of other individuals is also part of the allegation. So Moral of the story here, once again, is, well, is, well, this could be considered, you know, potentially, you know, people are reading about this, right? This is sort of bad news for crypto. Once again, Bitcoin price not really being affected. Um, but yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, guys, you know, whoever it is that you're following, you know, whether it be John McAfee or somebody on Twitter or anyone on YouTube or me or your friends or people in trading groups, just be careful of what people talk about. You never know why they're talking about what they're talking about. You know, you never know whether or not they've been paid. Obviously, guys, you know, there's lots of projects on this channel that I am definitely interested in. I speak about them as non-financial advice. And of course, occasionally we do have to do the sponsorship, right? I mean, you have to keep the channel going. But at the end of the day, like transparency is the key. And, you know, you need to be transparent with your audience. Let them know you're being paid for promotion, number one. And number two, most importantly, pay your taxes. I mean, look, I'm not going to get into the libertarian talk about whether or not taxes are good or bad, but at the end of the day, we all have to do it. If you live in the U.S. and you're a citizen, it's just how things are. So sorry to hear about that, but at the end of the day, guys, I do want to just end on somewhat of a positive note. I hate ending on negative notes. Friendly, uh, friendly reminder that you can show support for crypto zombie and you know head on over and make it uh well we are in the top 10 but you can see if we win uh i get to keep my nft 
So looking forward to that. That would be really awesome. I want to keep my NFT. But uh, thank you so much, guys. You guys rock. You're the reason that I do this every single day. Hope you're having an awesome day today. And uh, yeah, I mean, Bitcoin right now looks like it's uh, looks like it's actually trying to push back up, which is very nice. So that's good to see. But like I said, there is that potential chance we do retest some of those lower levels. But I still think the Bitcoin price is eyeing a massive breakout, definitely by the third week of October. We'll keep our eyes on the FUD, you know, about what happens with the uh, the Mt. Gox situation, but either way, I don't think it'll be lasting on the market even if we did dump. So that's it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for coming back to the channel. You guys rock. You're the reason that I do this every single day. My name is K-Dub. Be safe out there. Always do your own research. Nothing ever financial advice, but you already knew that, right? So that being said, that is it for me. You guys rock. Get subscribed. Uh, join the free Telegram group if you're interested. That's it for me today. Stay crypto. And until next time, of course, peace out.